Good afternoon, and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar from Victron Energy and our partner, MyPV. I'd like to start this webinar for my part. And during the webinar, we have two speakers coming from MyPV who will explain more about their product. First of all, I'd like to explain you a little bit about our webinar and where to get the information afterwards. Like I said, today's speakers are for my part. My name is Bob Hopman. I'm from sales manager for Victron Energy in Germany. And as you can see on the right side, we have two colleagues from IPV, Mr. Reinhard Hofstetter, who is responsible for uh, trainings from IPV and product management, and also Talal Butt, who is responsible for Sales International. Um, the webinar uh, is made this way that everybody is muted. And if you have a question, you can ask this in the questions and answers section within the Zoom. The webinar will be recorded. So afterwards, you will be able to see your webinar again in the near future in our archive. And also my PV will have the same option and they will present the video as well on their website. Some slides um, have uh, QR codes within them. And if you click on them you, uh, within the PDF, you can have a direct link to the products or you can scan it with your mobile phone or tablet. This webinar will also be archived as all other uh, webinars, which I do uh, on our Victron professional account. As you can see here within the list, we also did the same webinar already in the past in the German language. And we have more webinars within this archive. So if you want to have a look at that and take a look at other topics, please do. Well, to start with, um, Victron Energy Home Storage. Of course, this is all from the point of view from the Victron uh, products. So we are going to take a focus on the home storage systems with a battery installed. Many times the systems in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, but of course, many other countries worldwide, there are situations where a home storage makes a lot of sense. This is just an example where the roof is being uh, placed with full of uh, PV modules, which are used to make a higher self-consumption within the building. As you can see here, we have the public grid on the left side, and on the right side, we have the loads within the building, and now the PV generator can be any brand, uh, is able to produce energy, feed it to the loads, and if there is a surplus, it will feed it back into the grid. If we do it like this, it will look more or less like, this is of course a nice sunny day, uh, more or less like this. You have this uh, like a clock form of um, solar energy during the day, starts in the morning, at noon, the highest yield. And of course, in the afternoon, it will run down again and the yield will be gone. So loads that have to be served in the building in the evening or in the night, during the night, are here uh, displayed in blue in the graph. You can see we are not able to produce any energy for this load. And for that, we'd like to use the surplus, which is produced during the day, and use it also in the nighttime. So we in insert a storage system, which you can see here. We need an inverter charger from our side, a GX device for communication, and of course, a battery. In this case, the schematic is very simple. It is a single line diagram, but of course, this can also be a three phase system. As you can see in the schematic, we need an energy meter near to the grid meter which is able to register energy going in or out of the building. And with this information, we can now charge the battery during the daytime and discharge through nighttime. The graphs, which I showed before, will then of course look a little bit different because now we have this gray part in the graph where we charge the battery starting in the morning, going into the afternoon until the battery is full. And of course, 
in the nighttime, which is in blue here, we can now discharge the battery. This all depends a little bit on the size of your system, if you are able to serve all loads, all peaks. And of course, as you can see here, if your battery is big enough to go through the complete night. It all depends on many factors. Well, these kinds of home storage systems are, of course, well known in the market. And I think uh, I don't have to explain much more on that. But we have some examples here, which makes it very important and also very interesting to take a look at the Victron system. We are capable of be, uh, able to uh, serve also critical loads. Um, so if there is, for example, a, a blackout where the grid is failing, or this is even planned, then we can serve these critical loads within 20 milliseconds, which means that the critical load itself, that might be a server running computers, also lightning, uh, light within the building, will never notice, or the end user will never notice that the grid is lost. Because at this time, if the grid is gone, uh, the battery will be able to serve with our inverter charger, the critical load. It can be that your system doesn't even have the normal load as uh, shown in the first graph, but you can see here that we only have critical loads. This is due to the fact that our inverter charger is able to uh, serve with the high power rating. This of course means that the complete building, if your system is big enough, can be completely running on solar energy during daytime and nighttime. The important thing is that we can also make other configurations. As we've seen here in this display, we have the grid tied PV inverter directly after our meter in the grid. This means that if the grid fails, the grid tied inverter will also shut down. And uh, there is, of course, the critical loads that we serve ourselves. So why don't we use the grid tied PV inverter and place it on the output? In this example, we change the configuration. And therefore, this makes a lot of sense if your system is running in a region where you have a lot of blackouts or even small blackouts. Because now, if the grid fails, our inverter charge will take over. So at the output, we have either 230 volts, 50 hertz, or maybe uh, a three-phase system um, with 400 volts. And the grid tight PV inverter will still think the grid is available, so he will try to feed in on this system. The power for that will then go to the critical loads, and if there is a surplus, it will go through the inverter charger into the battery. And due to the fact that we do not have any grid here, the system will run in island mode, which means that if the battery will be full, fully charged, 100% state of charge, the output of our system will increase the frequency, which is called a frequency shift. And this is a, um, a parameter which can be set in the configuration. And today we will see that this frequently, sh uh, frequently shift is also used to make the sector coupling with heat. And that's what we'll see with my PV. Of course, systems can also be uh, set up like this, that we don't have any normal loads, only critical loads. So the complete building is running on the PV uh, uh, inverter and also our battery system. But we can also combine things. We, had, we have now seen an AC coupling. This is a DC coupling where the MPPT is charging our battery. The main advantage of this situation is that we have uh, the, the possibility to be able to do a black start. So in the morning, if there would not be a grid available and the battery had been discharged during nighttime, the MPPT will still be able to start up. And if the battery is being charged, the inverter charger will also start up the grid again. And like I said, we can also make combinations because in many households or buildings, we already have a grid tight inverter, which is installed and has been working for a couple of years. So the, maybe the uh, end user does not want to change the system and he maybe wants to add just another grid tight inverter to be able to work during blackouts uh, in, uh, and also nighttime. We can also do this with the DC coupled system. 
And of course, the graph um, it still looks the same. We have this uh, surplus, which is still in, in orange brown uh, color here, uh, which is still available for other comp uh, components. We have um, um, an increased self-sufficiency as well as an increased self-consumption due to the fact that we are now using a battery in the system. There is a lot of information on this slide, but I wanted to show you that the self-sufficiency, uh, which is uh, mainly the, uh, the energy from the battery as well from solar being used in the building, is in this case with a battery above 70%. The self-consumption rate is uh, over 55%. And if we take out the battery out of this system, we can already see that the self-sufficiency and self-consumption rate is going down. But we can even increase this value if we use the surplus energy, which is um, still available for other components, like I said, for heating water and also uh, uh, appliances like a electric vehicle. Of course, there are situations where surplus energy uh, is permitted and even desired because you, the end user is getting money for that. But if needed, you can also configure the system for zero feet in. If you do this, you have to be careful uh, concerning the topic um, heating, uh, like with the MyPV components, because in this case, of course, the system does not register any energy going into the grid anymore and therefore don't, doesn't have a signal to start charging. If you want to, you can still configure the inverter charger, uh, for example, with a relay to uh, have, when, for example, the battery is nearly full, you could, for example, give a signal to the MyPV system to start manually, but that's not uh, linear, so that's only on and off. Okay, the components in the Victron world are quite simple. You need an inverter charger. In most cases in Europe, we need a MultiPlus 2. And in this case, it's the MultiPlus 2 GX, which means that the GX device, the monitoring system for communicating is already integrated. We need a battery. Also here, in most cases nowadays, we only see lithium batteries. Uh, we started, of course, in, in the past with uh, lead acid batteries, but those are not very good for cycling. And of course, we need an energy meter. Um, I see a question coming in. I will just uh, uh, repeat the question. For heating water, would it be possible to use an assistant to enable a load like a hot water tank? For example, if the state of charge is bigger than 80% and state the charge for at least for 10 minutes and the output is less than 1000 watt, then the relay is on. Well. Actually, with assistance, you can uh, configure a lot within the MultiPlus. Um, this, of course, is only on and off due to the fact that you are controlling a relay. But the nice thing is that we will explain, and uh, the colleagues from IPV will explain that with schematics and also uh, a good explanation, we can now do a linear uh, heating up of water. Uh, like, for example, if you only have a couple of watts going out of your building into the grid, then with these couple of watts, you can heat up water up to a certain amount, depending on what type of MyPV component you're using. Okay. The, the graph is still the same. Like I said, we have this surplus. We can use that, for example, with the EV charger from Victron Energy to uh, start charging a uh, electric vehicle when there is enough energy. Also, this is like heating with water. We can do this in steps. So it makes sense if you want to start very slowly when there is a little bit surplus and you want to charge with a lot of energy when there is a lot of surplus in the system. So like I said, there is, this is like a, a summary. If we have solar energy, you would like, first of all, to uh, make sure that you do not use your appliances when there is no solar energy available, because this, of course, makes really sense and it decreases the amount of a need for battery systems. And then, like I said, we can include a battery system to make sure that we have loads during the nighttime, which we can serve with energy as well. 
we are, we've talked about surplus energy using for EV charging. And now for the topic of today, which is very important because it's a very interesting type of storage, we can also talk about the surplus energy being used for hot water. And we have been working together with MyPV for many years now, and we use those systems in on-grid as well as off-grid applications. And the nice thing, and that's, one, that's why we also have this webinar today, is we can now combine these on and off-grid situations and it will automatically switch over uh, the algorithm. So you don't have to worry about being uh, in a blackout and still the MyPV system will work with Victron. Okay, well, like I said, this is the information from the Victron part. And I will now uh, give over the next part to my colleagues from MyPV. And they will be able to explain you in the next um, 20, 25 minutes about MyPV. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Bob, from my side. So yeah, that was a uh, really nice information regarding the Vector, uh, Victron part. And now we will start with our team play and uh, team playing with the, with the compatibility settings and the topic which we will be discussing in this webinar is how our system can be coupled with Victron energy system. So that will be a part of on-grid systems and as well as uh, going into the off-grid system. So there will be these type of discussions uh, which we'll, we'll be going through this webinar. So I will start with a small introduction about our team. So the guy on the left is a managing director of MyPV. He's a co-founder of MyPV with his extensive experience in power electronics design, designing in inverter systems and also his experience in a solar thermal system. So together with both of these fields, we are enabled to play in this type of renewable heating, which is a growing sector for, for the upcoming market. And for my side, so you have a small intro from Bob already. I'm handling the international sales at my PV. So my background is an electrical engineer, specialized in solar energy and for a couple of years i am handling the sales department at my pv and my colleague will be doing most of the topic for this webinar uh, a small intro for Rainey is that he has a extensive experience in solar thermal background so we have guys from power electronics for solar thermal and together with this experience we are playing a good uh, good in our field. So yeah, what about my PV? So our history begins at 2011 and over the years we introduced our products which started with uh, Alva DC1 and over the years we have AC products and from single phase to three phase. And since last year we moved into our new sustainable building that's is also an interesting project by itself. So it's it's basically a pilot project from my PV itself. So this is as Bob was mentioning about the self reliance and uh, self sufficiency and self consumption. So this is the building giving a example about how it can be done. So it's a highly passive building itself. It's surrounded with PV panels and with these PV panels, we are doing heating, we are doing EV charging. So all of this is possible with the commercial scale building also. So I will not get more into these details. So if interested, we can, you can see more information on our website and things like that. So moving next, I will now hand over to my colleague, Rainy. So yeah, uh, now the ball is on your hands and over to you then. Thanks a lot, gentlemen, for the introduction and uh, welcome everybody to our joint webinar. Um, what MyPV has figured out a long time ago is that uh, PV systems can deliver much more than only electricity. So I mentioned it, uh, some of us and me too, we came from the solar thermal side. And from that point of view, we figured out a long time ago that this um, traditional way of uh, 
so solar heat generation is, is basically uh, it's basically out of time. So the technology has not become cheaper over decades. There is still a huge amount of material uh, in use. I'm, I'm talking about copper and talking about aluminium. And nowadays we see that uh, on the contrary, PV um, generators have become the cheapest form of, of renewable generators. So 10 years ago, let's say it like this, it was unthinkable to use PV power for heating. So the, the energy had a, a much uh, too high value in terms of, of economics, in terms of physics, and it was unthinkable to do power to heat, as we call it, with PV power. Things have changed completely. So PV power is now the cheapest way to create energy. And of course, now we can think about new applications. And this is what we already have done. So uh, using PV power for, um, for electric appliances is just normal. But um, Victron is also starting into uh, EV charging. And what my PV does is um, basically in, from German to English uh, translated sector coupling, or maybe a, a much more familiar way to describe it is power to heat. So it's about using PV power for hot water heating and space heating as well. So um, let's take an example here, what we do. This is um, an energy chart of a single family home in Europe. Most of the Europeans and most of the people who are installing or using our systems, they are aware of the amount of energy that they are using in their house for electric appliances and for light and so on dishwasher, washing machine, TV, whatever. And this is round about an energy value of 4,000 kilowatt hours per year. This is an average value for a single family home. And nearly everyone knows uh, how much this is because one time per year we have to pay the energy bill. Nearly no one knows that we need uh, approximately the same amount of energy for hot water heating. For a four person household, that's the case. And of course we can cover uh, also this energy sector to a huge amount during the year with uh, excessive PV power. So power that usually would be fed into the power grid. This is what we make use of. And this works for old buildings. This works for modern passive houses as well, because the amount of energy is just um, um, yeah, related to the number of people in the building. There's a, a much newer topic, which also includes electric space heating. Uh, we uh, see an application of this technology for new buildings, not for old um, buildings with the high uh, demand of, of, of space heating energy, but for new buildings, this is also a good application and cover this energy sector to a huge amount of the year with PV power. So let's talk about hot water mainly uh, in this webinar. Um, another chart here compares uh, storage capacities. Um, and when we want to store, when we want to save PV power, it's all about battery. Why is completely clear. We have electric energy, we want to save it in an electrical um, battery, in an electrical storage. Uh, on the average, I would say uh, that um, a typical storage capacity in a single family home is around about five kilowatt hours to 10 kilowatt hours, maybe higher, maybe Bob, you have uh, some new uh, values here later on. Um, in, in comparison to that, we have calculated how much energy we uh, can uh, save in um, heat applications. And for example, when we heat up the volume of a 300 liter hot water boiler, uh, let's say for 45 degrees centigrade, we see that we can save 15 kilowatt hours of energy in there. And this uh, is either um, a cheap alternative to batteries, uh, but we do not compete with batteries in general. We have, uh, yeah, um, we work together with companies like Victron and in combination with our two brands, this is much more than either electric storage or hot water storage. It can be a combination of both. And uh, in the combination with Victron, we see ourselves as a cheap way to expand existing storage capacities. So there's the battery side and there's the thermal side uh, due to us as well that can be uh, where we can make use of. And um, when there's a battery um, controlled by Victron, then uh, it can happen, uh, especially in this uh, summer period now, that the state of charge of the battery is on 100% um, sometime uh, at, at the late morning. 
And from this moment forward, we can make use of excessive PV power. So power that would be fed back into the power grid. Uh, and there's plenty of energy available from this moment uh, forward. Um, and I always say the worst, worst thing that can happen to a PV system is, uh, is the power uh, yeah, reduction or the shutdown. Why do such things happen? Um, they happen because there are limitations in our power grid. And from a technical point of view, uh, this is understandable. But it is uh, a complete disaster um, when we are talking about ecologic um, yeah, perspectives. Because there is a renewable power plant. It's already there. It's built. And then we have uh, to shut it down or we have to decrease the power output because the power grid cannot handle the excessive power. And um, yeah, there are ways to avoid that and uh, using additional storage capacities as hot water boilers or, or storage tank from hydronic space heating systems uh, offer such um, a storage capacity. And when we can make use of this excessive power, we avoid uh, the start of the conventional heating system uh, in the evening, hopefully. So what if, if we decrease the power of the PV system and in the evening, the, the gas boiler has to start to do the hot water heat. We already know where the gas comes from, in, especially in Germany and in Austria. This is now aware to everyone. We can avoid that by using the excessive power. This is what we do. And um, there are several solutions so far on the market from IPV. We are um, pretty yeah, well known for our immersion heaters. There's one um, type which is directly connected to PV panels. There's an MPP tracker inside and we can do the power to heat uh, very easy uh, without any inverter, without any other system. And in doing so with the DC solution, it's basically the same um, principle that we have with a conventional solar thermal system. We use all the power from the panels for heating only. Um, this is a nice product, uh, especially for off-grid applications, and it works also during blackouts. Um, for the European market, uh, there are more the on-grid products interesting, and that's why there's also a version of uh, the ELVA, which means electric water heater for on-grid systems where we just use the excessive power. Basically, the same purpose is what uh, the actor is for. So what is the difference between ACLVE and actor? This is where Victron comes into the game. Um, let's um, imagine an AC LVE. You have the power electronics for the linear power control of the heater and the immersion heater combined in one product. Um, it's basically say, the same uh, for Actor when we remove this immersion heater. And uh, this uh, makes us much more flexible for the, for the project because now we have just the power stage left and we can connect um, yeah, many different types of electric heaters. It can be immersion heaters, it can be infrared panels or electric heating mats. And this uh, product is um, combinable with Victron in two ways. And this is what we are going to show now. Uh, there are some more detailed uh, views of the actor. It comes with a single phase variant um, with the European main socket here, there's also a variant for the international market available with an adapter for this socket. Um, and it's basically um, something like a gearbox to describe it in another way. It's a gearbox uh, which um, connects the PV part of the AC installation with the electric heater. So this gearbox adjusts the power output on the electric heater very fast and very accurate because the excessive power is something that changes permanently. And we have our gearbox here to um, set the power output of the electric heater accordingly. From one second to the other, we are um, readjusting this power output. And the Actor comes also in a three phase variant. It's called Actor 9S. And uh, I have one of those uh, next to me. It's very small, it's a nine kilowatt unit. And um, it can um, in total adjust the power output from zero to 9,000 watts by using three outputs here. And um, the detailed thing here I need to describe is that we can uh, control the power output on one phase only, and we are switching to other phases when there is more than enough excessive power. So this is basically what uh, is also done by um, other brands uh, who are offering 
uh, three-phase power stages on the market. What can the Ecto-9S do better than the others? We can adjust the power output, um, not only on output one, but also on output two, on output three as well. We can control each of these three outputs linearly from zero to 3000 watts, actually, not at the same time, but one after the other. And this is what no one else can. And uh, now we can control the power output also on three single phase uh, electric heaters. It does not need to be one three phase electric heater up to nine kilowatt. It can also work with three single phase heaters up to three kilowatt maximum each. And um, yeah, that's uh, a, a, a big deal because uh, now you are much more flexible on your projects and there are still many unique sales points. Um, number one, there's, there's the, the size. I mean, this, this uh, thing is such, compact, uh, no one else uh, can offer such a, a power density in a, in a solution like this. We have our uh, color touch screen here, which gives you a very intuitive way to, um, to do the settings and there's everything pluggable. And this is of course a benefit for the installation time. And we have uh, our principle of open communication. And that's why we are compatible with Bigtron as well. And if you like, we offer our communication description as well. All right, Actor and Actor 9S. So I want to talk about the first application with Bigtron. And this is the on-grid operation mode. This is uh, basically that one application we have at MyPV. Uh, nearly 99% of our systems are running in that way. So we are on the grid and it, it's about using excessive power. And here comes again the fact why this is so essential to adjust the power output very fast and very accurate linearly on the electric heater because we have now two things that are changing permanently. There's number one, the PV generator. Of course, this power output changes. Clouds are moving on the sky and the air radiation changes. We all know that, but there's another thing. And these are the, are the loads in the building. So something is always switched on and off, uh, TV, light, whatever. And it's all about the excessive power. So it's about the energy that would be fed into the grid and this balance changes permanently. Our gearbox, as I already uh, called it, adjusts the power output accordingly. And especially on the grid with Victron, this happens so fast and so accurate, one time per second, we can adjust the power output accordingly. Where does the excessive information comes from? So uh, for non-compatible system, my systems, my PV is offering uh, an energy meter for the installation in the feed-in point. You do not need this meter when you have a Victron system because Victron is already measuring the excessive power in the feed endpoint, and we can make use of this measurement. Where do we get this information from? We get it from the GX, uh, JX control from Victron. Both are connected to the router in the building. So the GX and the actor are connected with, with an ethernet cable to the router. And within this local area network, these devices communicate which, with, with each other. We are receiving the meter value in the feed-in point from Victron. And that's why we have two tasks. Our basic task, uh, our main task uh, as a gearbox is the power regulator. We are the power regulator. We are adjusting the power output on the electric heater. But we are as, uh, the controller as well because the GX does not know that we are there. We are uh, taking the information we need from the GX, but um, we are controlling ourselves by our own software. So we have two purposes in that uh, application. So what if the grid fails? Um, I have uh, visualized that with this uh, red X here. So let's say there's um, a blackout or whatever. Um, what happens then? We do not um, get the um, meter value anymore in the feeding point because there's actually no power flow, neither from the grid nor to the grid. Uh, what happens? The actor um, receives this information from the GX as well. Now he knows we are in off-grid mode and he can automatically switch over to the off-grid mode. Um, what happens then is that we are controlled by the AC frequency. 
more details on that later, but uh, the set point for our power output is now the AC frequency. And this is, of course, something you cannot change when you are on the grid. It's, it's either 50 hertz in Europe or 60 hertz in, the, in North America. You cannot change that. But off the grid, you can change that. And this is what Bigtron does. And uh, it does that um, uh, depending on the state of charge of the battery. The reason why Victron uh, is doing so is um, once the battery uh, reaches the state of full charge, it has to tell the PV inverter that uh, the battery is full. And uh, before the PV inverter starts to decrease the power output, we start to increase the uh, heat production. And the reason why we do so is that we can make now use of energy that will otherwise be unused. We avoid the decrease of the PV inverter. And now the set point signal is the frequency controlled by Victron. So we are no longer the controller in the system. All the intelligence is uh, at, on the Victron side, but we, we are still in our main purpose uh, doing the power regulation on the electric heater. And this is uh, basically the same when we are purely off the grid. So we are again controlled by Victron uh, due to the AC frequency. And um, yeah, for uh, off-grid systems, this uh, can be interesting for two reasons. Uh, number one, we can make use of excessive power for useful things, for example, hot water heating. And uh, this is done many times in this um, typical Austrian projects. I say um, one of our stereotypes is that we have our mountain shelters in the Alps. And this is basically um, um, the main application here in Austria. Um, for other off-grid systems, uh, there can be uh, another reason to do so. Uh, for example, when there are rotating generators like wind turbines or something, um, then it can be necessary that um, the system just gets rid of the energy because uh, you cannot decrease the RPMs of the wind turbine, for example, and then it's all about uh, controlling a dump load and get rid of the energy to the ambient air, whatever. Uh, the the main um, the main thing here is uh, to to make the off grid stable and then you can also heat uh, the environment. It does not matter. It's all about um, safety and and uh, supply safety in this off grid. But again, we are not the controller anymore as we are on the grid, uh, but we are still the power regulator which uh, adjusts the output on the electric heating system. Uh, in doing so, in off-grid systems, we um, raise the utilization ratio of the PV system. It pays off much earlier because this energy would be unused otherwise. So when we can make use of the energy um, for hot water heating, for example, um, then um, you can uh, save, for example, on, on, on wood. Or when you have a wood stove off the grid, you can save on wood. Uh, and we, we avoid the decrease of the PV, uh, the shutdown of the PV system, um, because there is no other way to use the energy anymore. The loads are supplied, the battery is full, you cannot do something else but uh, hot water heating, and this is what we do. Good. Um, one more slide on this frequency control. We use it either when the grid fails or in the pure off-grid mode. So once again, what happens there? We have, let's say a 50 Hertz grid, and now please focus on the horizontal axis here on this diagram. And this is the normal way to run the system. Uh, now the battery becomes full. The state of charge goes to towards uh, 100%. What happens? Um, the Victron system is increasing the frequency in the AC off grid. It's uh, required to do so to tell the PV inverter battery is full, you have to decrease your power output. We are aware of this increase, we detect that. And in this application, it's not even required to connect an ethernet cable to the actor. The signal comes from the supply side of the power. We are detecting the frequency there. And when we see there's an increase of the frequency, we uh, increase our power output on the electric heater. And we do this um, to avoid the decrease of the power output of the inverter. The factory preset on the actor is that we start working from 50 Hertz and we give 100% to the electric heater at 51 Hertz. So this is just a preset. 
that is in there. Of course, you can adjust this on the display. Here on the, on the bottom right, you see that you can adjust the lower limit and the upper limit. And this is absolutely essential for your project because um, off-grid projects are strongly very individual. So uh, it depends on the generators, it depends on the loads, it depends on the battery, um, how the frequency is reacting by Victor. And this will definitely be some, some kind of trial and error process where you have to go through. But it's very easy to adjust the lower limit and the upper limit and uh, to do a configuration with a, with a stable setting. So we have done uh, this on the, on the display. So um, when you have uh, an ethernet, when you would have an ethernet connection, of course, you can also do all the settings on the web interface, but this is uh, hardly never available in off-grid installations. And of course, it's possible on the display, very easy and very intuitive. So technical details, I'm not going to bore you with uh, all this uh, details. Um, I'm just giving you the links to where you find further info. As uh, Bob told you, the uh, Victron slides have this QR code. That's not the case, but we have a hyperlink in here. And after the session, you can download the, um, the slides from today. And in the PDF document, of course, you can make use of these hyperlinks in there. There you find all the technical details uh, like uh, data sheets, operation manuals, and assembly instructions. Um, to summarize, uh, the actor in the single phase variant can control the power output from zero to 3000 watts. And for the actor 9S, this is also the case from zero to 9000 watts. But I'm telling you once again, we can control the power output not on all three phases simultaneously. The power control happens on one uh, phase only at the same time, but we are flexible. We can change it from here to here to here, uh, but not at the same time. This is very important for off-grid systems. When you want to make the balance on all three phases simultaneously, then it's about using three single phase actors, then the Ecto 9S is not the solution of choice. Um, one hint for retrofitting installations, when you want to supply the power to a three phase uh, heating element, then um, it's basically possible up to nine kilowatt. Uh, you have to uh, focus on one detail to ensure that the components fit together. This three phase heater needs to have a neutral conductor. The Ecto 9S is connected to the load uh, in a star connection, not in a delta connection. But uh, with a neutral conductor, it will also work with, let's say, 4.5 kilowatt uh, heater, 6 kilowatt heater, no problem. You do not even have to make an adjustment here on our devices when you use uh, loads with uh, lower nominal power. The actors will detect the nominal power of their loads automatically. Also here, the hyperlinks for further info. Uh, basically, Actor and Actor 9S can be used with electric heaters also from, from other uh, manufacturers. Um, this is absolutely no problem to us. Uh, if you want to uh, combine it with our accessory parts, there is a single phase three kilowatt heater and a three phase nine kilowatt heater um, that we are offering. And in combination with Actra, uh, this solution become uh, linearly power controlled and thus they become PV ready. So without the Actra, these are just on off loads, uh, not PV ready. Um, from the factory, out of the box, the actors come with seven operation modes, and these are somehow uh, predefined standard applications. We can cover most of the applications and most of the pro uh, projects out there with these predefined standard applications. Um, number one uh, operation mode is, is the common uh, operation mode that is nearly used by, let's say, 95% of all the uh, projects. It's the hot water mode. But with the hot water mode, it does not uh, mean that you are actually always heating uh, fresh water or drinking water. The immersion heater can also be installed in a, in a storage tank of a hydronic space heating system. This, this does not mean any difference to us. All right, uh, benefits at a glance. We think um, it's uh, very easy to install, in, especially with our background from the past with the with the solar thermal stuff where we, where we used to do um, installations with very high efforts with piping and expansion waves and, and anti-freezing liquid and all that stuff. Now it's, it's uh, very easy using wires instead of pipes, make the systems actually maintenance-free. 
uh, and uh, it's making uh, the stuff also uh, yeah, cheaper nowadays because uh, again, PV has become the cheapest um, power plant that we have. Okay, uh, where to buy? This is um, something that um, is also important for Talal. He's um, your contact for, for sales and distribution uh, topics. Um, here's an overview uh, where uh, can end consumers uh, buy, where can craftsmen buy. Um, as a manufacturer, we have um, a distribution um, yeah, principle to the wholesalers, to distributors. We are supplying them directly. Uh, we can also uh, offer to um, installers, electricians, um, yeah, plumbers as well, um, but we do not uh, sell to the end customer. So we do not uh, be to see uh, at MyPV as, the, as a manufacturer. Okay, where do you find further info? Uh, of course, on our website, anytime, uh, much of information is there, uh, starting with frequency asked questions, um, overview of compatible manufacturers. Of course, in there, there are also the links to the Victron manual because Victron uh, has uh, created an online man manual for the combination with Actor. You also see product videos, data sheets, wiring diagrams, anytime. So you do not even have to uh, create an account on our website. You can download this information now, anytime without any registration, uh, which means you do not uh, have to wait uh, until you get the first delivery from MyPV to, to open the box, to, to see the assembly instruction and to check the wiring. You can download uh, all the details right now, anytime. Okay, uh, also YouTube becomes um, more and more important. Uh, most of the videos are there in German, to be honest, but uh, the subtitles of, on YouTube, they work pretty well, uh, not perfectly well, but pretty well. And um, with ongoing time, uh, we are also uploading English videos there. So please uh, check out regularly. And um, there is uh, a lot of um, useful information uh, online. Our products, uh, your benefits. Uh, we are offering um, yeah, a longer lifespan of your conventional uh, heating system because this can probably uh, be completely offline during summertime. Uh, we are saving on your operation costs. You have to, uh, you can increase your self-consumption ratio and you, have, you can uh, probably um, yeah, avoid the start of your conventional heating system. Use excess power, excessive power during summertime and do not start your, your gas boiler uh, in, this, in this warm period. It's not necessary. And um, yeah, in summer, 100% hot water is possible without any additional heating sources. Uh, why is that? Uh, what happens if you have a longer period of, of bad weather? Um, it's very easy to explain. Uh, when the devices come out of the box, they are adjusted for the use of excessive power only. But it's very easy with a few clicks on the display, you can do the so-called boost backup. So there's an option to ensure a minimum temperature in your boiler. Um, therefore you can adjust two time frames. So exa for example, uh, heat up the boiler in the morning for two hours and in the evening uh, for three hours to let's say 45 degrees, uh, just to ensure your comfort. And in between uh, excessive power can be used and therefore it can also heat up to higher temperatures, 60 degrees centigrade for hot water boilers or even higher when you are giving the energy to a hydronic storage tank, for example. All right, then, oh, I'm, I'm already done then. <laughs> uh, we are in time, Bob. Well, I know you're perfect in time, I must say. <laughs> Thank you very much for your uh, explanations and also Tal, of course, for the explanations about my PV. Um, I have still a couple of slides, which I will just start with in a second. And after that, I saw already some questions coming in. And uh, the nice thing is that we still have some spare time to, to answer these questions, which I will do after my slides when I'm finished. And uh, okay, I will start with that. Uh, like I said, also for my part, a small summary in where you can get information. We have a lot of information and brochures. Uh, digitally on, on our homepage, so you can download them. We also have them in paper if needed. Um, we do have online tradings as well, which uh, we which you can see in the Victron Professional site. This is uh, um, where you don't you need an account, but it's free of cost. Um, 
And of course, we have a lot of information on the blog about products, about references, and which is very interesting because also here installations with MyPV are visible. Um, the trainings, we do also do physical trainings in, in Germany, because like I said, I'm responsible for Germany, but um, we do them worldwide. So you can just take a look uh, at our homepage about this information. And you can also um, uh, go to those trainings if you want to. Uh, very important is also the Victron community. In the community, we have a very big database of questions and answers asked by customers. Uh, and answered by partly Victron uh, um, colleagues, as well as uh, installers that use our systems very often. So if you want to know more about MyPV and you don't have somebody available very quickly, uh, of course, we can also refer to data sheets and manuals, but sometimes it's just asking a question in this uh, question part, uh, very easy. And you will already see that we have uh, quite a lot of information already available on the community. So first of all, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention for this uh, uh, webinar, which we did together now. And I would like to uh, go into some questions asked by the attendees. First of all, um, we'll try to figure out if this is a question for me, of course, or maybe directly for my PV, I will start. Uh, the first question which I saw was, can the EV charger uh, be used with the AC Tor or Actor? Um, actually, this can be done. You must, um, of course, uh, take in mind that the system is looking at how much energy is surplus energy going into the grid. And the, the hot water the heating of hot water, um, as well as a charging and uh, EV charger, um, is done by looking how much energy is going into the grid. So if you want to make priorities, for example, you could tell the system um, at 100 watt surplus energy, it should start the MyPV heater. Then it will first take all the energy needed uh, to heat up the water. And of course, if we have even more surplus energy than that. Then for example, you could put the EV charger on just another example, 300 watt surplus energy, which means that if there is so much um, surplus energy that even the, the heater with, for example, three kilowatt, uh, the actor with three kilowatt single phase is already at its max, then there will be enough surplus energy to serve your EV charger. This is making the priority on hot water, and there was another question uh, coming from somebody who has a uh, van to um, a vehicle to include warm water heating. Um, as of today, we, in, at least in our slides, mostly discussed water heaters for residential applications, buildings. Uh, that's also, you can already see that uh, up to three kilowatts or with the Ector three phase up to nine kilowatts which means of course that this, those heaters are normally far too big for a vehicle. But I guess it's not a problem at all to also include a smaller heater with less power for a vehicle. So I think that should not be a problem. You should be aware of one thing. A vehicle is always an off-grid ap application, which means that the MultiPlus from our side is normally waiting for a PV inverter to produce surplus energy, because then it will start frequently sh a frequency shift. If you want to avoid that, there is, of course, uh, besides if you're familiar with the Victron system, if not, please contact your dealer locally. Uh, normally, we do that with a so-called assistant in the configuration, but with the virtual switch, we can also do frequently sh a frequency shift as well without having a PV verter in the system. So it would be possible. And otherwise, of course, we can also control it with a relay. Then I saw a question, just a second. I'm interested in setting up a system that uses PV when the sun is up, then uses the battery backup. And if batteries run out, then the inverter automatically switches to city power. Can a 15 kVA Quattro inverter co be configured to do this? Well, actually it can be done. The, the Victro MultiPlus or Quattros have a relay, a transfer relay on the AC input, which can be controlled. So for example, you can configure it to be open, which means that 
uh, it also if the grid is available, it will still remain in island mode. And then of course, as it is in island mode, we can do the frequency shift to heat up with my PV. And if needed, we can just say, for example, if the battery is running down, the state of charge is below a certain value, which you can configure, then it will of course uh, switch to the grid again. And the same way as Reinhardt explained that we can go from on-grid to off-grid, of course, the other way around, we can go to uh, the on-grid system as well. And then the energy meter will provide us the information about the energy going in or out of the system to be able to control the MyPV Acton. There is another question. We can get this uh, solution in systems of American voltages, 120 volts, uh, 60 hertz. Well, from the Victron part, point of view, this is not a problem at all. Um, I believe Reinhardt already told that also my PV actors are available or for the 120 volt 60 hertz. I'm not sure, maybe yeah. then um, Reinhardt can add information yeah. to that. But from um, our point of view, it can be done. Mm -hmm. um, Talal, you mentioned that you want to answer that question. No, uh, it clicked. Oh yeah, I can answer that. So yeah, in the North American market, it's it's the different voltage so yeah the voltage are not workable uh, for the on-grid options but for off-grid yeah it's it can be work uh, it's possible to do my pv in off-grid scenario with 60 hertz but unfortunately with the on-grid application with the voltage it's not possible maybe Rainer, you want to add something also uh, that's currently uh, what, that's actually what it is about. So the actor is designed for um, 230 volt uh, grids. Uh, that's a requirement. Uh, we are flexible on the on the frequency, uh, but not for it's not uh, working in 120 volt uh, grids. Okay. Unfortunately, that's the case so far. Okay. Of course, if you want to build a system like this, we could think of a solution like this. You could take, for example, a Victron system in 230 volt. So you can use the actor on the output side and use a different kind of charger, which is capable of charging the battery from the 120 uh, volt uh, 60 Hertz grid. Mm -hmm. But that's of course a little bit more, you need more components in your system. Thanks for this hint. Okay, um, I also saw well, just a practical question. Uh, we Can we get, get the presentation of the webinar afterwards? Uh, yes, of course, like uh, we all explained, we have two uh, solutions for that. You will get uh, the possibility to download the PDF of this webinar and from Victim side, as well as from my PV side, we'll be able to do the recordings online, which you can also take a look at afterwards. Then there was a question, I think, for uh, Reinhardt. Can you yeah. confirm that the later actor can switch from on-grid to off-grid mode without operator intervention? Yes, it does. And it was um, really a pleasure. I was uh, able to test it um, uh, this my, myself uh, in our lab with Victron components. And when you are on the grid uh, and the grid fails, it, um, it switches over to the off-grid mode automatically. That's um, the, the big uh, thing of this webinar, actually, because um, we are uh, already compatible with Victron for, for years now, either on the grid or off the grid. The big deal here is now that we can automatically switch over without uh, an operator invention. And I felt this happened within a second or so. So uh, when the grid fails, uh, we immediately got the required information from the GX uh, that we are now off the grid and switched uh, ourselves over to frequency control. Um, vice versa, when the grid comes again, it, it took a few minutes, but that's not a problem at all from my point of view, because also, um, a grid type PV inverter takes a few minutes to, to start again after the grid phase. So that's just normal. Um, and and that this was really cool to see. As a, within one second or so, it automatically switched in the off-grid mode uh, perfectly. Mm. Okay, then there was another question, I think about the external energy meter. Yeah. Uh, why do you use an external energy meter rather than the internal Victron energy meter? How fast? And how accurate is the internal energy meter? Um, I think this question is concerning the Victron system. 
in, in normal home storage applications, in most cases, the user, the end users use a, an external grid meter because it's more practical because there are loads in the building that can be monitored, but are not within the backup power of the inverter charger, which is in the system. So that's in most cases, the, the reason why they take an external energy meter. But of course we can take the internal information as well. But we have to uh, be very careful that uh, it can only be done due to the fact that we don't uh, have through Modbus TCP the information about the grid meter anymore. So that's why we used it in, in Europe. We use the EM24 for three phase systems and the EM112 for single phase. Uh, there was another question about the split phase uh, or the, maybe the, uh, the North American applications. There was a question asking for if in order to receive 240 volt split phase, I would need the quattro and an auto transformer, correct? Well, there are, of course, uh, well, this is correct. It can work like that, but uh, we also have a split phase multi plus now. So uh, in very specific power uh, windows, we also have a specific multi plus for that directly giving split phase. Here, another one for North America, just to be sure. In North America, if I want the system, I need to create a microgrid 230 volt with Victron um, and battery and charger controllers just to connect the system to heat the water and heat the ambient to this microgrid. Well, yes, that's correct. Like my PV just explained, their inverter can run on 230 volts only. And therefore, yes, you build the microgrid to make sure that this works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think it's not called an inverter. I think it's called a diverter uh, in English, uh, what we call the power stage, uh, but just just the detail on this. <laughs> um, what do you mean, the, the inverter? No, you you, uh, you mentioned uh, my PV's inverter. We are not ah. having uh, inverters. Okay. We're having actually a, a diverter, as it is called also. Thank you very much for this information. Yes. Just the detail. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I don't see any more questions, at least at the moment. We can, of course, wait a, a minute or two. But if there are no more questions uh, coming in, then I would like to thank everybody, of course, from my side. And uh, thank you for your attention being here. Um, and of course, I would like to thank Reinhard and also Talal for being here and uh, make this, make this uh, possible, the, doing a webinar together. We have to thank you as well, Bob. Thank you for, for the organization. We are using the Victron uh, platform for this. Um, it was the second time we're doing a webinar together. We already had one in German uh, and it was again a real pleasure. So uh, thank you very much for your efforts and also to you and your whole team um, since we are compatible with each other for, for years now. Yes. And now it's, um, it's about uh, one more benefit that our our customers have when the grid fails, we can automatically change our operation mode. Sure is, sure is. <laughs> okay, well, I don't see any more questions. Then I would like to say, uh, have a nice evening already. Uh, it's uh, at least here in Europe, we have yeah, five, five p.m. <laughs> and um, for North America, of course, the day is just starting. Yeah, have a good um, day. <laughs> have a good day and, uh, and hope to see or talk to you soon, maybe on an exhibition. Wherever Bye -bye. you are, ladies and gentlemen, all the best uh, from uh, us here, um, Bob in Germany and Talal and me in Austria. Goodbye and thank you for participating. Ciao. Bye-bye. <laughs>